Ladies and gents, how you going? Welcome back. My name is Liam Zolo. I'm just going to give you a couple of little tips on on how to stay motivated, really, and and uh, you know pushing through adversity. And the 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 key to today today's lesson really is um, always showing up. So we talked about last time. We talked last time about uh, honoring your word. And we do. We talked about you know pushing through that New Year's resolution by always continuously honouring the word. You say you're going to do something, you do it. Start with the small things and then lead with the bigger things. Today is always showing up, uh, and I want to share a story with you. Uh, and it's also in, in my book as well, the the humble hero um, that you can get on the Life Kitchen pretty soon. But um, the the idea of always showing up is. You know, it doesn't matter what if you get bullied or whatever happens to you in, in your life, you just continue to show up if that's going to be on progressing on your goal. Uh, I want to share a story with you. Uh, I, I digress, right? I usually do that. I'm a bit of a bounce up between, between stories, but I want to be staying focused and, and give you this uh, awesome story. So when I was 15 years old, I was actually at the Sydney Roosters at the time, and I was trying to make the under 18 side, and I was only 15, and I was trying to make the under 18 side. So I went up to the coach and asked the coach if I could, you know, skip three years and and train with the under 18. So when it became my turn to be 18, I would make the team. That's what I thought. So that's three years of training, and you know, fast forward three years, it came to my my age group, and I didn't make the team. Which was, I mean, I made the team as a shadow player, but I never actually got to play on the on the on the on the actual field. I got to be a part of the squad, but didn't get to play, right? But in that time period, that three years, uh, you know, the the players that were ahead of me kept telling me to go stand on the wing, you know. And there's nothing wrong with being standing on the wing. The wing's a position in a footy in the in the rugby league world. There's nothing wrong with that, but you know, it wasn't my position. And every time, and the wingers wouldn't even be used in that position, and they were wingers. They would be jumping in the middle and just you know having having fun playing footy, and they would make me stand on the wing, and I wouldn't be even utilised. So I did that for three years, and then I got to eight under eighteen side, and the coach said, "Well, yeah, I haven't really got to play you because you know you're a shadow player, just in case anyone else gets injured." Uh, and then I, what I did was I went to the under twenty side when I was eighteen. So. Uh, and spent the next two years trying to make the under 20s Roosters side. So that's five years of training, always showing up five days a week, and I wasn't even contracted as a footy player then. I just kept asking the coach. In that time, the, the players would still tell me to go stand in the wing. You know, I was a bit bullied and stuff like that, but then I knew they were older guys than me, so it wasn't a, you know, a bullying in a sense of, you know, it was just a bit of a lighthearted thing. But you know, back then I took it personally because I was there just training and these guys were getting paid to do what they love doing and I was just trying to get better. So they would still continue to tell me to go stand in the wings. For five years I copped. I was training five days a week for five years to try and make a rooster jersey. Uh, and I ended up making the rooster jersey, I ended up making the rooster side for five years after. But if you fast forward another couple of years, right, and this is where the story really gets, gets juicy. Um, there was one player in particular that was used to tell me to go stand in the wing for f- about three to five years. I reckon he would, he would, he would say it. I can't really remember how long he was actually there for, but my recollection, I think he was there for five years. Anyway, um, this player, uh, you know, would always tell me to go stand in the wing because I wasn't good enough, right? And then I got the opportunity to play for the Italian National Rugby League team, which was uh, quite an honour. And within that. Uh, you know, we we're playing in Wales, and I thought I was a bit of a celebrity, and and uh, we thought we were a bit of celebrities. It was it was just a bit of fun. It wasn't thinking, it wasn't too egotistic. But people were coming up to us in this little town of Wales, going, "Oh, you guys, the Italian team, and stuff like that." So, and we're signing autographs. It was just an essence of feeling good about ourselves for you know doing what we love doing and having a little bit of. Uh, fame from it as well, so um, it wasn't like a rock star thing. I just felt like a rock star for a moment in time, which actually felt pretty cool. But I don't know how they deal with it on a day to day basis. I digress from my story again. It got to the night, uh, the, the day of us playing, 
And all these guys kept saying to me in my footy team, we're gonna go meet up with this guy, right? I'm gonna leave his name out just out of respect for him. He's in the book, if you wanna go read the book, he, his name's in there, but um, you know, he used to pick on me and I thought he was a bit of a bully back then. Uh, and what I found interesting that all, all fast forward when I was playing for Italy, all the players thought to me, they said to me, they go, we're gonna go meet up with this guy. And I go, who's this guy? I was pretty excited to meet him and I, I ended up meeting this guy and I ended up being the same guy that told me to go play on the wing and bullied me as a kid. And he was a pretty famous rugby league star in Wales at the time. And I was like, oh fuck, like, I thought I got rid of this guy out of my life, this bully, this villain out of my life. And I felt that in, insecurity of being a 15 year old straight away when only moments earlier I was feeling like a bit of a rock star. It's amazing how you can go from that, you know. But that night, go, got up that night and I ended up playing for the Italian team and, and you know, all the, like I had a moment to myself after playing in Wales on my highest standard of rugby league I ever played uh, you know, and I got to see the opportunity that that guy who told me to go stand in the wing for those many, many years and go stand in the cold, dark, rain, rainy night while watching everyone else train and get better, he was sitting in the crowd watching us play, um, watching me play my high standard of footy. And what was even further ironic, um, or the further irony, the irony continues further when I was actually playing on the wing that night. Now, you know, as I was saying before, I was a middle player, but then I got to play on the wing. Now, I couldn't have played the highest standard of rugby league that I ever got to play because without that guy. So I thought the guy was a bully, but he wasn't a bully. He was just, you know, having his own insecurities or some things came up. He just didn't want me to be part of the, the team back then because I wasn't up to scratch and I, he wasn't, it wasn't part of the contracted formula, which is fine, but at the same time, it did hurt me from that side. But then now I couldn't have. F um, further my career played an international test match unless I got the opportunity to play on the wing because the coach comes up to me and said you know we can only we've only got a spot on the wing can you play it and I go yes I can play that and I look back on it that night after and he's sitting there in a cold dark windy night in Wales watching me play my highest standard of rugby league and I'm playing on the wing the very position he told me to go and stand and play in the first place so I went up to the guy after the the footy game I said thank you so much man like you've done so much for me to help me in, in, in my in my career I had that light bulb moment and he's like oh yeah no worries man I don't know what I've done but you know I just remember us training together as young kids and you know you're always full of passion so do I consider this guy a bully at the end of it all not at all do I consider him a villain no I just consider him a person that was there as a humble hero in my eyes that helped me get to a position but he was a bit more of an unlikely hero he was the most humble guy I've ever met he wasn't how I met him uh, how I remember him when I was a young kid he was a very pleasant guy and you know very very humble so you know and I couldn't have gone two messages from that I couldn't have played the highest level unless I continued to show up day in, day out, even though I was getting bullied, even though I was getting pushed out to a position where no one was using in those drills, I still showed up. In the t cold, dark, windy nights, I still showed up. And I'm not trying to say this from a preaching perspective, but if you show up, you never know where it's gonna lead you in the in the future. Even if people bully you in the, in in why you're showing up to places to just to try and learn and grow, just let them. You know, let them, because they might have their own stuff going on. And you know, it's an opportunity just to you f to focus on what you really want in your life. So I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.